Welcome to We Are the Church, a ministry of daily encouragement from the First United Methodist Church in Orange, California. Let's roll the intro and let's get started, shall we? A very good morning to you all. I hope this finds you all well wherever you are in the world. A happy Tuesday to you. Uh, today we're going to be reading from Paul's first letter to the uh, Corinthian church, chapter 14, verses 26 to 33. What then should be done, my friends, says the author, when you come together in worship, each has a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation, so let all things be done for building up. If anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be only two or three at most, and each in turn, and let someone interpret. But if there is no one to interpret, let them be silent in church and speak to themselves and to God. Let two or three prophets speak, and let the others weigh what is said, and if a revelation is made, to someone else sitting nearby, let the first person be silent. For you can all prophesy one by one, so that all may learn and all be encouraged. And the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is a God of uh, order and peace and not a God of disorder. When we come together in worship, I have noticed in my own life a, a deep difference between the way that God prompts me to pray in worship as opposed to the times when I am praying alone. Different gifts uh, emerge from the Holy Spirit at different times. But the gifts that are given by the Spirit or activated in us by the Holy Spirit are only activated for this purpose, according to the author of 1 Corinthians, for the purpose of building up the body of Christ of encouraging one another. We come together to praise God and to reveal God's greater glory to ourselves and to others. And in doing this, we want to do so in such a way that we not only glorify God, but we are building up everyone who is with us. I mean, think about it. When we come together in worship, there are those who have been following Christ as faithful and intentional disciples for decades. Uh, and then there are those who have only recently made the commitment to come and be a part of the faith community. So how are we to have a one-size-fits-all message? Well, we do it by, as a community, carefully uh, monitoring the circumstances so that we can be sure everyone is on board. No insider language, no secret nods or, 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 or winks to one another, and certainly not everybody clamoring to get their uh, chance at the microphone all at the same time. God is a God of uh, order and peace, not a God of disorder. And the, the building up of the body is the most important thing of all. So if you have a powerful personal revelation in your life, um, the thing to do is to bring it forward to the rest of the community in such a way that everyone is able to hear and that everyone is able to understand. Now, Paul was here speaking specifically of those who claimed to have special prayer language, a special language, the language of the angels, glossolalia in Greek. And they would come and they would speak this out and then someone would give an interpretation of what was spoken. And it was meant to uh, be a sign of uh, powerful wonder to the people who were new to the faith and evidence of God's great power in their midst. But if it just sounds like gibberish and nobody's interpreting and everybody is speaking at the same time over one another, well, what good is that to anyone? It doesn't help the newcomers uh, be built up in the body. In fact, it quite frightens them. And so Paul is saying, no church can move any faster and progress any, uh, any further down the road than the pace of the least of its members. So we must always take care to make sure that those who are the most vulnerable, those who are the most uh, impressionable, those who are the newest to the faith are on board with us and they know what we're talking about. It's a, it's a responsibility, not only of the pastor, but according to this passage, it's a responsibility of the whole community of faith. 
Everyone is ready to come with a hymn. Everyone is ready to come with a word of instruction. Everyone is ready to come with a word of prophecy. This is a picture of a church when, when, where when they come together to worship, everyone is involved. So I hope it's that way where you find yourself worshiping. And I hope that next time you come, you come with an openness to God and to what God may be saying. And perhaps at the right time, if God inspires you, you stand up and have a chance to, to encourage the people and to build them up in the name of Christ. Let's pray. We thank you, O Lord, that the body does indeed have many parts, but it is a single body. And we ask, Lord, that you help us to take our place in worship and to um, build up the body of Christ for the greater good of the body of Christ and also that we might be equipped to serve the world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks for stopping in today, friends. I hope you have a wonderful Tuesday. And... Uh, I hope that uh, you will uh, remember as we go along uh, to do no harm, to do all the good you can, and to stay in love with God. Thanks for being here. I'm Pastor Bill Johnson saying blessings. Have a great day.